Well, it appears we will not be seeing Chevreus on this banner. But you know what? Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe, you know, brand new Natland character banner. Maybe even the Pyro Archon. That'd be good. However, new banner review. Ambrosial Essence, Discerner of Enigmas, and not a bad weapon banner, actually. Not bad. Let's get into it. So we have Razor, interesting choice, <laughs> Shangling, and Yanfei. Now, we do have two Pyro characters to accompany the Denjo character who wants to burn. Emily is going to be our brand new character for the patch, our only new character. Her whole thing is having enemies burn in order to get her buff. So she wants to actually have someone burning on the field for her whole kit to work. However, can you play Emily without burning? Yeah, you actually can. She will apply Dendro. It's not going to be that fast or that much application. But yeah, I mean, you can play her in Bloom Teams. You can play her in Quicken. But I wouldn't advertise like her being the one to get the you know spread trigger. But yeah, you can play her without burning. Just know that the character is centered around burning and that's where all her buffs are, is in burning teams. Now, Emily is very simple. All you do is just either do your skill or your burst. They're both gonna put down that lamp, that Lumido's case. It's gonna apply Denjo to random targets. After that, you use someone to apply Pyro and your job is done. Like essentially, she's just doing damage with that lamp. That lamp is attacking targets with Dendro, and as long as burning is there, you can see that it gets kind of buffed up when those things spin around it. That's it. Essentially, it's just like a sub DPS that's Dendro. And essentially, she kind of fits in that same spot that Shang Ling would fit, just being a sub DPS for the team, but except you're trying to cater around burning. For Emily's burst, what's happening is you're basically just getting a stronger source of damage. You can see the Lumidos case is actually like kind of bigger and more extravagant. That's because with her skill, it's level one and two, and with her burst, it's level three. So it's just basically, like I said, damage, damage, damage. She's just doing damage off the field as long as you're burning. And guess what? No restriction. You don't have to be playing two Pyro, two Dendro. There's no restriction for team building. You can throw Kazuha in there if you want. You can do a, you know, soup team where you have like Electro, Pyro, Dendro, all the stuff in there. There is no restriction here. So, I mean, the only real restriction is just having, you know, the ability to burn, right? And even then, I mean, maybe you're in a situation where the enemy is Pyro. You know what I mean? So you don't even have to actually bring it yourself. So what Emily does for burning teams is she actually makes them a lot safer to play and a lot more viable. This passive gives you 85% pyro res against burning damage. Not just pyro as a whole, but burning damage specifically. So when you're trying to play Risley, and Risley's losing his own health because that's how his kit works, and you're trying to keep your buff up, but you're losing health because your own kit and you're burning to death because you're on fire, guess what? With Emily, that won't be a problem. You won't be burning to death. So you can actually play these burning teams and not struggle when it comes to surviving. And on top of that, Emily is going to do more damage to enemies who are literally burning on fire. So for every 1,000 attack, increasing damage dealt by 15%, and it can go up to 36%. So you can see why you really want to play her in a burning team. For Emily's talent, you're going to want the skill and the burst. Her best in-slot set is going to be Unfinished Reverie. But a very close second to that is actually going to be Deep Wood Memories. And ideally, what you can do is you can have someone else on the same team. They don't have to be Dendro, by the way. They don't. They can be a different element. Put Deep Wood on a different character on the team and then put Unfinished Reverie on Emily. That's going to give her nice damage. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but Golden Troop is an option. You can do your skill and then, of course, Emily will be off the field. So you will get the full effect of it. But your burst is your biggest damage source. And that does not count as skill damage. So wouldn't recommend it once again, but it is an option. And last but not least, if you just have absolutely nothing and no choice, two piece, two piece, it is. So two piece, two piece attack, two piece gladiator, two piece echoes, two piece, whatever you got to give yourself that attack bonus. Weapons for Emily. We'll get into her own personal a little bit later, but you could do Scarlet Sands, Sana's weapon. You could do Calamity Queller, Shen He's weapon. Get away with Fav, possibly, with like the energy recharge. You'll actually be able to get your burst off pretty easily. Black Cliff Pole, if you just want the stat stick, and if you're in an AoE situation. Battle Pass Havers, Deathmatch, and Contain the Cross Spear if you really have no other option. Missive Wind Spear if you were around for that event. Once again, Battle Pass Havers, uh, Ballad, you could use that as well, but. 
mostly I just say either Fev or if you have one of the five star options. And we'll get into this later, but that's definitely going to be the go to. Are you pulling constellations? If you are, C1 is going to increase her skill damage and her passive by 20%, which they kind of go hand in hand. If a party member does the burden reaction, you will actually have an additional scent. So think of it like another thing blasting out those home seeking things that hit enemies. You'll have another one of those going out every like three seconds. So you have your normal thing that goes out and hits an enemy, but you also have an extra one too. C2 is literally the deep wood memory set to within the constellation. <laughs> you have 30% Denjo res and it's gonna be for 10 seconds. So it's pretty good. C3 is your skill gets increased by three. C4, your burst will be extended by two seconds and you'll have more of those shots going out faster. So only by like 0.3 seconds, but basically those shots will be like, you know, kind of honing in at enemies a little bit faster than they usually would. C5, your burst gets increased by three. And at C6, you become the on-fielder, the on-field DPS. Once you do your skill or your burst, you will gain abiding fragrance for five seconds. Your normal and charge attacks will be converted into dendro damage. Cannot be overwritten, so don't worry, C6 Bennett. And your increase of your attack will be by 300%. So, uh, and also mentioned that it will be removed if their four cents are created this way. And it could be triggered every 12 seconds. So you won't have too long to do it, but you will be a on-field DPS for at least five seconds. So pretty simple, right? Overall, pretty simple character. You know, constellations will add a lot to it, but base kit, just burn. <laughs> then we have Yelon. Yelon is nice. She's an HP scaler and she's also a sub DPS. So for Yelon, you're looking for a lot of HP in your build. You're looking for a good crit ratio. And most importantly, you're looking for ER because your ER, you're gonna be chasing down those ER substats and those ER pieces because you're gonna need it. It's her whole thing around her kit and it's like 70 cost for the burst. You know, think about like Sing Cho, for example. You know what I mean? That's all you really wanna do is do your burst. So what's cool about Elon is how cool her skill looks. Like so sick, right? But the problem is you only get so many particles from it. And at C0, you only have one of those charges. So you don't really get that much energy. That's why you need so much ER because the way that she gets her energy is it kind of sucks, you know what I mean? So she doesn't get a lot of it. It doesn't do a lot of things to get her energy back that quickly as a 10 second cooldown. So the problem here is you want to have a lot of ER and to get into that, let's go into the weapons. So Aqua Simulacra is going to be her signature bow. However, it's amazing for damage. It's not amazing for ER. Like we just discussed, ER is going to be a very important part to her kit. So if you have ER already in her kit, like her, your artifact substats and whatnot, then you basically are just trying to see if you can get away with using this and have enough ER at the same time. But if you don't, you're going to end up using something like Elegy, which is going to be great for the rest of your team. So fantastic weapon, very underrated weapon, like very, very good for supports. But if you don't have Elegy for the end, classic fav classic fav i can guarantee you most people's elons are on favonia's warbow because you just need the energy especially at c0 so you know if you have refinements on it that's even better but fav is going to be the way for yelon if you don't have enough energy 61 percent that might be where you go for yelon so just be aware of that if you want to do damage it might be kind of hard to do so if you don't have enough er so just keep that in mind ER bows and damage bows are going to be her go-to. Maybe you could do sacrificial bow as well. This actually helps you out too because it's more ER. And if you have refinements on it, you have a good chance of actually getting your skill again. So kind of like a free C1 for her. As for her artifacts, personally, I do two-piece, two-piece, tenacity, and Eden's recharge because the substats just work in my favor. But you can do four-piece emblem. I'd imagine if I hit like the button for it, yeah, you can see most individuals use emblem, four piece emblem, uh, two piece hydro damage, two piece HP, two piece energy, two piece hydro damage. Just really whatever you can do to get away with enough energy so you can actually use like weapons that you want to use, like aqua or damage oriented weapons. It's not the end of the world if you're not, you know, 
going for a damage weapon, like if you have, you know, a very low crit damage but a high crit rate, that's still fine, you know, because the most important thing is just being able to burst. So for our artifacts, it can very much just vary, you know what I mean? Emblem, tenacity, two piece, two piece ER, two piece hydro damage, whatever you have that can make the character hit all the stats that she wants to hit. So obviously you want to stay in the realm of HP and ER, of course. So you definitely don't want any attack. The most important talent for Yelan is going to be her burst, of course, but I definitely recommend leveling her skill because this thing hits hard. Hits very hard. You know, with the HP scaler, they hit hard. So definitely want to level these two. Do not to worry about the normal attacks. They do not matter at all. Um, she does have a cool little function where she has like this charged, you know, like barb, barb through, barb breakthrough wire kind of thing. And, you know, it's there, but there it is. Breakthrough barb damage. However, while it does have a nice hit to it, it's not going to be something that you want to like put investment into. So I wouldn't focus too much on that, but just skill and burst for the most part. Um, she gets more HP if she's actually in a team with other elements. So teammates that are other elements will help her out. And really cool, she gives you 50% damage bonus if you're on the field. So if you pop this, she'll have it herself if she's on the field, but also whoever else is on the field as well will get that damage bonus. So it's very cool. It's a very cool passive just for a sub DPS character and fits her very well. And of course you have your 25% more rewards in Leo Expeditions. When it comes to Yelan's constellations, they are arguably some of the best in the game. Like, th these are so good. C1 is another charge for her skill. So if you remember her actual, like, cool little invisible mode, you'll have two charges of that. And that's huge for her because, once again, ER is a big issue for her. So having two of those is actually really good for your ER. You get more, more particles. Her C2 is actually for her burst. It's actually gonna be doing more hits. You'll have this like special air that does like more damage every like two seconds. So essentially what that does is it kind of helps her out when it comes to Hydra application because she's not as good at that as Sing Cho is. But with this, it does actually help. So she can do more application with her C2. So, and it's more damage as well. C3 is gonna be her burst increase by three levels. C4, this is gonna be when she does her uh, her skill, right? So when you're actually doing this, if you run through enemies, let's say these are enemies, you would run through all of them, right? You do one, two, three, you would actually get 10% HP for all of those enemies that you marked. So if you did three, you would get 30%. But if you did four, you get 40%. And that's actually kind of huge for like other HP scalers like Farina or Nouvellet, where you can give them 40% HP um, just additionally. So, but also it works for herself as well. So that's huge for HP scalers. C5 is going to be her skill increase by three and then winner takes all. So it's going to be in your burst mode. Basically your breakthrough barbs that like special charge that we talked about essentially those are going to be happening as well in the background when you do your burst but all in all you've probably seen it already it just is insane it's just a bunch of arrows hitting the enemies for so much damage it's ridiculous like you just annihilate something with yelan's burst alone with c6 as you should it is c6 after all but crazy con super cool con and kind of just breaks the game you know and <laughs> in my opinion but but overall elon is a great character to pick up she's not somebody who you absolutely need but she definitely is somebody who is like an old reliable you know what i mean people always talked about sing cho and how like oh i already have sing cho i don't need elon don't look at it like that look at it like oh my god i could have a second sing cho you know what i mean so that's more the way i look at it when these characters come out when two characters kind of like similar to each other Think about it like you can have double it, you know? There's a lot of double Hydro teams with Sing Cho and Yelan and now Freena as well. So definitely a good pickup. I don't know about trying to go for it now before Natland, but overall I would definitely say you can't go wrong with this character. You will definitely enjoy her company, even at C0. She's great. As for Yanfei, Yanfei is a four-star DPS, so she's gonna want the classic crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge. Her weapons are gonna range from Skyward Atlas. That's gonna be a good one for you. Might be hard to build your crit ratio, but you know, you have a lot of attack and the passive is good for her. 
Also, Lost Prayer Sacred Winds, that actually is a good crit stat stick. Also, passive works in your favor as well. Memory of Dust, once again, back to the attack, and you also need a shield, but that can work as well. If we dive into four stars, you could do the Fontaine Craftable, actually, Flowing Purity. This actually includes Bond of Life. So that's uh, kind of a new mechanic to kind of play with if you haven't already. And the Wood Sith, gonna be a great option for you if you have it. Even at R1, you have a 60% attack, 48% elemental damage bonus, or 240 EM. And the EM part is a little, eh, but she is a power character, so she can actually vape. But you're looking for the first two stats for Wood Sith, and especially if you have refinements, it's even better. Last but not least, Black Clifigate, if you actually picked it up in the shop. Uh, once again, passive is a little eh. It's gonna be like, you know, defeating enemies, so it might take a bit to get the passive going. But 55 crit damage is nice. So, same stat as the Winston. For her artifacts, an old classic, Crimson, that can definitely work on Yanfei as well. You could do Shimanawas. I like Shimanawas personally. I would go with that one if I were you. Shimanawas is great for Yanfei. You could do four piece wanderers troop catalyst or bow users get the 35 percent charge attack damage and that's her main source of damage you could do just two piece two piece you know i don't mean not the four piece but just a two piece two piece attack if you have nothing else playing with farina march to say hunter that can definitely work there unfinished reverie eh, you know if you're in a burning comp then i suppose but this is kind of a very specific one and then retracting bolide is kind of a last ditch effort uh, if she has a shield, which she will with C4, if you ever C4, and you'll have a 40% normal and charge attack damage increase. And for those of you who are new to the game, Martial Artist, if you have this set lying around, you could actually use this on Yanfei as well. If you have Yanfei and you don't have any 5-star artifacts yet, this can definitely be an option to use for the time being, but eventually you will be upgrading to 5-star pieces. For her talents, her normal attack is going to be the most important thing to level, because that also is your charge attacks as well, that's your main source of damage. And Yanfei has this thing called Scarlet Seals, where if you were to do an E on an enemy, you have these things behind you. Those are Scarlet Seals. Once you exhaust those by doing a charge attack, you get that little stack right there. That means like your charge attack damage is ready to go. Like your charge attack damage is going to be full. So you want to start using your charge attacks when you have these stacks. And that'll give you more damage when you do a charge attack. However, this is still the most important thing to level is your normal attack. Your skill, you can, you know, it will do damage, but most importantly, normal attack, and you can do your burst as well. With the burst, you will also get more Scarlet Seals and you'll get it at fixed intervals. So you'll be getting these constantly as you go, like every second. And once again, you want those Scarlet Seals behind you to give yourself more charge attack damage. Her passes are kinda cool. Actually gives herself like 5% power damage bonus for every seal that she has. It's one of the passives. AOE power damage when she actually does a charge attack for the crit hits. And actually can find the resources on the minimap in Leeway. So that's always a nice one. For her constellations, her C1 is actually going to reduce the stamina cost for her charge attacks. C2 is actually going to increase your crit rate by 20% only against enemies that are half health. C3 is your skill increase by three. C4 is well known in the community as Tank Fey. Basically, when you do your burst, you gain a shield. So, based off her HP, and of course, you have more of that pyro damage resistance. So, actually pretty good, especially going back to retracting Bolai, because it's kind of like a two in one. C5 is your burst increase by three, and her C6 is increase the maximum number of Scarlet Seals by one. So, remember these? you'll have an extra one. So it will be even more powerful. So C6 is pretty good. Yanfei, honestly, pretty underrated character for a four star DPS and honestly just pretty solid. And then there's Razor. Razor is a physical four star DPS unit and physical does not get the best of love, unfortunately. So it's been kind of rough for him. However, he does have an alternate build. He has the EM build. So you can run like C6 Bennett, Nahida, and a Hydra character like Farina or Yelan, Singcho. And you can play like this kind of bloom team with him this em oriented team so that's pretty cool but he is going to want classic crit rate crit damage and a good amount of er because he also has a pretty high burst cost of 80 but as for his weapons he's got some options if you're going for the physical build you can do the classic just signature weapon for eula song of broken pines high base attack super high base attack physical damage and of course the passive will work in his favor you could also do Wolf's Gravestone, very generic, kind of just generalist kind of weapon for attack scalers. You could also do Beacon of the Reed Sea. Bet you didn't know, Dia actually does have a signature weapon. This is Dia's signature. 
and the passive will work with, with Razor as well for its attack scaling capabilities, although you don't want to go with a shield, so keep that in mind. As for physical, you can just go with more DPS oriented weapons like Battle Pass Havers, Serpent Spine would be great for him, um, very just generalist for the passive and crit rate stat stick. You could also go for Black Cliff Slasher for the crit damage stat stick. And if you are going for his EM build, you can go with something like Rain Slasher would be good for EM. To something like even Mailed Flower. Once again, kind of a rough situation. It is a event weapon, one time deal. So if you have it, you have it. If you don't, I'm sorry. Also, you can go with Aqua Marine. Aquamarine is actually very good for him, and this is also on the weapon banner. So keep that in mind. This is actually a very good one just for EM scale or EM build characters that are Claymore. So pretty good. Once again, event weapon alert. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If you do, Ultimate Overlord's Mega Magic Sword. Not the craziest option for him, but it is a option. Just kind of, once again, a generalist attack up and an even more attack up if you've done the Melazine quests. So for the physical kind of build, you can do four piece pale flame, or you can do like a two piece, two piece pale flame and bloodstained chivalry. If you want to, your kind of build will be attack, sands, electro goblet, crit rate, crit damage, or it could do physical damage if you're really trying to go for that, but you kind of do want to actually use his burst so that Electro Damage Goblet is going to come in handy. Then if you want to go ahead and do his EM build, you would go with something like Gilded Dreams. So Gilded Dreams would be a good one for him as a four piece set. So full on set, EM and an attack and EM as well. So that'll be like your go to for EM Razor. And once again, if you're new, Martial Artist, once again, comes in clutch. Uh, you know, if you even get these pieces, you might just have a bunch of random rainbow pieces, but this is an option that does fit his playstyle. As for his talents, his normal attack and his burst are going to be very important. So you kind of want to level them in tandem, like, you know, keep them at the same pace or just do one after another, but make sure these two are leveled. The skill, you should level it too because it kind of gives them a lot of ER. So, you know, it's like a lot of ER and cooldown reduction and stuff like that in his kit. So like literally just ER in his kit. So you do want to actually, you know, use this. So you do want to actually kind of use this as well. So he's kind of kind of in all three when it comes to talents, but normal attack and burst are very important. And you can sprint more. As for his constellations, his C1 is going to give him 10% more damage whenever he picks up an elemental orb or a particle. His C2 is actually going to give him crit rate against opponents that have less than 30% HP by 10%. Then this is going to be three levels for his skill. This is actually gonna put defense down on enemies who you did your skill press on. Not your hold, but your press. You can press and you can hold. So your actual press is gonna put the defense down on an enemy. C5, his burst level goes up by three. And C6, apparently it's just, you do a normal attack and there's like some electro damage that comes down. Kinda looks like this. That right there. It's kind of, kind of whatever for a C6. Uh, it's, it's based off his percentage of attack, but yeah, every so often you'll have this lightning strike that'll come down just by doing a normal attack. So, yeah. So Razor, yeah, you know, it's been a long time. It's one of the first characters to come out, and there's just not that much for him in this day and age of Kenshin. But you can find a place for him. He does have multiple builds, and his EM build is kind of cool, but. Yeah, Razor, just, eh. And last, but certainly not least, everyone's favorite character, the absolute best character in the game, Shang Ling. No, but in all seriousness, she has a bit of a problem. Shang Ling is kind of sus before you get to C4. What I mean by that is, C1 is good. Uh, when Goba attacks an enemy with his pyro attacks, they have the res put down by 15%. C2 is absolutely meaningless. There's just nothing there. Basically, you do a normal attack, and essentially, it'll do a little bit of pyro damage. If I can actually... There you go. So, it was that right there. Just by doing your normal attack, she'll do some pyro damage, and it just really does nothing at all. C3 is good. It increases your burst by three levels. And then C4 is going to make your burst last a lot longer. So, that's such a vital part to her character, because it kind of makes the whole character. That's who Xiongling is as an identity. Like, it's just this burst. So, 
this lasting a lot longer really makes the character and the rest just get better you know global levels go up and everybody who or whenever the power nato is active everybody on the field will get power damage bonus by 15 percent so i wanted to start with her cons because it's a very important part of her kit and it almost like kind of makes the character but with that being said he's a very very energy hungry character and she doesn't really make that many particles energy particles so you need a lot of er a lot of er you can see my build is very scuffed i have like no crit rate my build is terrible because it's mostly just going in the er so if you kind of have a rough crit ratio don't be too surprised because you're putting so much into your your energy recharge and you know definitely have an er weapon as well you don't have to have it you can have a much better build than i have i mean obviously right but Scarlet Sands is one of, one of the newer ones that's good for her. Um, Engulfing Lightning could be great for her as well. Staff of Foma, if you're good on your energy. <laughs> Fish for the catch. You can get it by fishing. It's always going to be there in the game. You can always get it. Fav, huge for her. Deathmatch for Battle Pass Havers. Dragon's Bane. The list goes on for her. You know, either EM, crit, energy recharge. Just whatever you, whatever your build is looking like that you can get away with. So if you have enough ER from substats, you can like use a damage weapon. But if you don't, you want that ER. She's usually like this with Bennett. Like she's like his right hand man. When it comes to the artifacts set, emblem four piece is going to be great for her. That's usually like the go to. But like I said, depending on your stats, you can have Crimson. You could have like uh, Gilded Dreams. It just depends. But if you're asking me, I would definitely advocate for energy because you just kind of need it. You really need it, not kind of, you do need it. Power NATO is your strongest attribute and you want to literally like crown this thing, like level it up all the way, you know? Don't neglect Globo like I did, he's good as well, but your talent priority is Pyro NATO. Level that, for sure. And you'll always hear a lot about Shangling so much because she's one of the only characters in the game that does what she does. And that's like a sub DPS who's Pyro. Not just applying pyro, but actually doing damage with off-field pyro attacks. Dia has that within her skill, but it's not nearly as strong as this. So, a 1.0 character at the start of the game, all the way up until now, almost 5.0. This is the only character in the game that is our sub-DPS that's pyro. So that's why it's kind of a big deal. That's why Shaolin always gets talked about and brought up. So in the end, when you only have one character who fulfills a role, it's kind of hard to pick anybody else because she's the only one. So that is why you always hear about Shaolin, Opa Shaolin, Shaolin this, Shaolin that, because she's the only character to do what she does. Hopefully Natlin will change that. Power Archon will change that, hopefully. But if not, Shaolin forever. As for the old weapon banner, we have Aqua Simulacra, HP gets increased by 16%, and when there are actual enemies nearby, the damage goes up by 20%. So, pretty generic, honestly. You know, HP increase and just more damage. But the real thing is the 88 crit damage, which will definitely help out in building Elon. But, pretty simple weapon, very good. Can go on multiple characters like Ganyu, Lenny, you know what I mean? Even Tainari. So, honestly, generic actually pretty good a generic signature weapon is actually kind of redundant but <laughs> a generic weapon that is a five star is very good so can be used it's very versatile and i like it so it's actually pretty good to be on this banner because the other weapon is emily's best in slot lumidos elegy it is a 33 percent crit rate weapon so that'll help out with your build a lot six of weight base attack and attack extra by 15 percent with the passive and basically what happens is when you trigger burning, or you deal dental damage to burning opponents, your damage goes up by 18%, and it's max stacks of two, so 36%. Also, when two stacks are reached and it gets refreshed, you restore 12 energy. This is literally, literally a energy recharge weapon and a damage weapon. So that's why it's so good. It's so good for Emily because it kind of takes care of, you know, two birds, one stone. So it's very good for Emily. For other characters, as long as you trigger burning, you will get the bonuses from it. So it's not the hardest thing to do, but you would need another Denjo character, or at least a Denjo enemy or a Pyro enemy that could burn.
burn themselves or something. Wandering Even Star is actually pretty good for Nahida. If you don't have another option, that is actually very good for her. EM increase and attack increase as well. So nearby party members gain 30% of this buff in the same duration. So it actually is pretty good for Nahida. If you have refinements, it refines to 48%, so it does does double, but pretty good for her. This is pretty much the same as the Wandering Even Star, same passive, just a Claymore. So Burgeon Dia, EM Razor, you know, Kave even. So, you know, you can just kinda like pick your poison with this. Um, not a bad passive. Not a bad passive, you know. Can't go wrong here. Always can rely on Fav. Low base attack, but high energy recharge, and your crit hits have a 60% chance to generate particles for your teammates. And obviously, these get a lot better with refinements. So keep that in mind. If you get these, it's always a W. And same can be said for Fav Lance. Same exact situation, just a Lance, right? A polearm. So same thing. This one could be used a lot, you know, Shangling, Yunjin, Zhongli. So same thing. And you also refinements as well, you're gonna want to. So if you get these, once again, absolute W. If you played Aito in some kind of trial or event or something, you've seen this weapon. <laughs> so this is the flute, attack substat, and essentially it's just one of those generic weapons that just kind of does physical damage in front of you. So you do normal charge attacks and you have like these musical notes surrounding you. And essentially like every so often you'll have like this attack this, this physical damage that will hit the opponent in front of you. So, kind of just whack, but you know, it is an option. You definitely hope that you don't get this when you wish on the weapon banner. And that's it. This is kind of a long one. Sorry about that, but there was kind of a lot to explain with Emily. But I'll be going for her. I'm more excited about her than I am the first, like, lineup of Natland characters, ironically enough. But, yeah, that is Emily. That is Yalon. That is the rest of the cast. That's the weapons as well. Let me know if you'll be going for Emily or not, or saving for Natlan. I know there's a lot of uh, Zilonin savers out there, me included. So, be waiting for that. But that'll be all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next one.